welcome. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Do you, do you have a, a drink with you? Yes, I do. Um, I have a uh, iced tea. Oh, nice. Um, I wish it was a Long Island iced tea, but it's a little bit too early for that. So, yeah. yeah. 11 a.m. on a Friday, you know. Yeah, yeah. I've I've got okay. um just some ginger and mango green tea. So, um, I should have put some ice in because it's dang hot in London. <laughs> well, cheers. Cheers. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Congrats on on buffering. I um I can't wait to watch it. Um, it looks from what I've I've sort of heard about it sounds amazing. So can you tell me a little bit about it um, and what we can as an audience I guess expect from the show? Yeah, sure. So buffering um, is a brand new comedy sitcom for ITV Two. And it was created and written by Ian Sterling, who's the voice of Love Island, and uh, Steve Viega, who's a stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. um, and it kind of is loosely based on Ian's career when he was a kids' TV presenter. Um, and it's also it's kind of focusing on this concept called adulting, which is okay. how do I describe it? It's like that weird stage in your mid to late twenties when yeah you're too old to be like reckless and free but you don't have your shit together enough to kind of yeah. like be a proper adult so it follows him and a bunch of other individuals myself and then his flatmates kind of experiencing that in london oh um, sounds amazing yeah. it's very relatable i think <laughs> yeah <to them. laughs> audiences um and then it's i think the best way to describe it is it's a combination between like friends, Sesame Street, um, fresh meat, and like catastrophe. It's got a oh lot. Oh my of gosh! All the good ones. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> all the good ones. This is gonna be amazing. I mean, it's my first sort of bigger leading role, but the the whole show is so great because it's really an ensemble cast. Okay. So everyone is kind of like a leading role in it. Yeah. 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 Um, I play Olivia, who is uh, basically the producer of uh, Flummox Live, which is Ian and Larry the Lizard and Steve's um, kids TV show, okay. which is really wacky and fun. Mm -hmm. and, then, um, and then Ian's on and off again, like exasperated girlfriend, basically. <laughs> I'd love to find out a little bit about your process as an actor, if that's okay. Um, yeah. So you book the role, you get given the script. What do you do to the text to bring it to life? And how do you create, you know, how did you create Olivia? Let's talk about Olivia because Olivia tough. specifically. Okay. Um, let me think. I, so Olivia specifically is, she's very different to who I am in, in real life. She's like, okay. she's kind of like a Miranda. <laughs> I think I'm more like a, Carrie strokes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so I, to start with, I kind of like, I, I know a lot of women in my personal life who are like Olivia, who are real, no nonsense career women. And so it was kind of, that's, that was the starting point. I kind of was like, oh, who can I compare her to? And sort of like, oh, it feels like this person. And then, um, and then obviously went through the text and started picking things out that I could relate to and felt, you know, um, tried to parallel them with things that were happening in my life or have happened in my life. Mm. Um, and then also she's British. So there was the accent as well yeah. to work on. I'm clearly not British. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Salvadorian American, but I can do an English accent apparently. So <laughs> there was that. Um, and yeah, that's, that kind of is generally the, the process for for this specific character okay um, yeah. do you do you go through the text and sort of pick bits out do you action do you how, how do you sort of make it not just you know flat text on the page and actually you know bring it like yeah yeah I lift it how do you how do you do that how do you lift it <laughs> okay. memorize the lines first of all <laughs> it's very important um I think 
I mean, it depends on the role. Like some jump out m- much easier than others. Some you have to investigate a lot more. Mm. Um, with text and stuff, and specifically comedy and buffering specifically, there was such a fine balance between comedy and tragedy um, that needed to kind of be uh, dealt with quite carefully because okay. Olivia and Ian's character experienced a tremendous loss in the series. And so, you know, I'd go through that, I guess, in different scenes, I'd, th- I'd try and figure out, like, why is she doing that? Or mm. why a lot of actors would say, why am I doing that? Mm. Um, and then with jokes and things like that, you kind of play around with the text and repeat them a lot and figure out if there are different inflections that are going to work better or like intentions or um, things like that. Um, but yeah, generally speaking, I, I do delve into text a lot. I think I'm a lot more of a like sensory based actor. So I'll start with like a feeling or um, or like a, or it could be like the wardrobe and how does that change me and, and, mm. and like that. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> yeah, no, totally, totally. No, it does, it does. Um, you're also big into comedy, and yeah. I um, I watch some of your stuff. You're very funny. <laughs> um, so in terms of, I guess, h- how have you used, I know that, you know, buffering has that element of, of comedy in it, but how, how have you used your comedy in your acting and in, in life? And um, is that a big part of, of who you are as as an actor, uh, does that make sense? That question. Yeah, I don't know. That does that... make sense. <laughs> I heard myself, and I was like, "Is that an actual question?" <laughs> um, I yes, comedy is a very big part of my life in general. I you know most of the shows I watch are comedic shows or drama comedic shows. Mm. I grew up obsessed with cartoons. Um, and I think, I mean, horribly, as, as horrible as it sounds, I, I use comedy to deflect a lot. So okay. it's very much like a coping mechanism for not dealing with what, you know, uncomfortable, mm. real emotions. Um, but the great thing about comedy is that it's actually a, a really liberating genre. So mm. you can play a lot of tragedy within it and the reality of things. And, and that's what I really like about it. Also it's really fun. Like you get to go to yeah. work and have a nice time and laugh and, you know, work with funny people. Um, so yeah, I guess I, I guess it's the, the genre that I feel most like, uh, at, like, I don't know, most affinity with, but then at yeah. the same time, it's not just what I do. I just, I like, I like it. Yeah. yeah it just comes yeah. absolutely naturally to you. Yeah. Um, how do you motivate yourself, especially when things are a little bit quieter? I mean, we had, you know, an entire year, longer than a year of sort of the industry almost shutting down. Um, yeah. So how, how do you generally kind of motivate yourself and keep pushing forward when things are a bit quieter and maybe a bit tougher sometimes? With, with a lot of difficulty. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard. There's too much TV to watch. That's um, true. That's true much television it's amazing um it's yeah it's 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 really tough it's really ruthless um I, my coping mechanism has been I've been very lucky that I have a really good support network so I have mm-hmm. supportive family and friends that really 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 yeah. helps um my agent is also very supportive um and generally I would say like try not to take it personally it's obviously really tough because it is your passion and it's you ultimately um uh but yeah i do have times where like you know i'll audition a lot and you're like a little battery by the end of it you get sort of drained and you're like why is it me um so i exercise that helps me (laughs) i do uh i hang out with a lot of people in my downtime because obviously when you're on set you you know, it's quite hard to have a social life, mm. busy. Um, I have a dog, so I hang out with Aww. her. Um, what, what kind of dog? I've got a staffy. Hi, sweet. <laughs> She's hiding. She doesn't what, like what's her name? Summer. Summer, oh, sweet. Yeah, she's super cute. So yeah, cute. Dog, dogs are the best. So dogs help a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, they do. Caring for something else helps a lot. Um, and what else do I do? Well, before I would try and go like travel. Mm. That really helps. Creating your own work, it's a huge part of the industry, especially now, you know, a lot of casting directors and agents and just people in the industry are always consistently saying, create your own work, create your own work. And I know that you have done quite a bit of that. Yes. So um, how, how, how do you think creating your own work has benefited your career so far? And what, what do you get from creating your own work? Um, I think it's vital to create your own work and for your own creative sanity, kind of like going back on the question you'd said before of how do you stay sane? It's a huge aspect of how I stay sane in, in just the acting side of things. I'm, I'm also incredibly passionate about every single aspect of the entertainment industry. Mm. So, you know, I love writing, I love acting, I love, you know, I've just started directing, I like producing, like everything about it. So for me, it brings me a lot of joy and it's very cathartic. And I guess the most important thing about it is because especially if you're an actor, you spend a lot of time waiting for your mm. next job or a lot of time when you are working, unless you're super lucky, um, you don't necessarily really get to make that many creative choices. So you're, you know, it's your interpretation of the character, but you know, it's not your script. It's not, uh, it's not your vision. It's not your idea. So making stuff or working and collaborating with people who you, and also you don't get to choose who you work with when you get yeah. cast and stuff, unless you're yeah. like Tom Cruise and you're insane. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, so it's, it's a really good way of getting to generate your own point of view and your own creative vision, I guess. Mm. And then working with people who you want to work with. So friends or peers and, and I find it super rewarding and, and it, it's really challenging as well because you're usually like having to work on a budget or a time yeah. scale and things like that. And that's exciting because you get to learn all sorts of new skills and yeah, it's great. I think it's, super important and then on the industry aspect of it i mean i guess it's super important because now there's no excuse you know you have yeah. social media youtube all these platforms where you can put yourself out there and if that's what you want to do in life then you might as well just take advantage of it yeah um, yeah saying that i'm not like on TikTok, and i you know i'm not like one of these sort of impersonator people who are so amazing and so talented yeah. on media um it just helps to get your you know your 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 creativity out there essentially mm. what is the best advice that you have received in your career or in life that has yeah meant something to you or had had an impact for acting specifically or doing this kind of work um i would say be prepared mm. um, make bold choices and stick with them. Um, uh, don't be afraid to say no or ask questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really important because it's your, your career and you're on the line. And then in general, <laughs> um, <laughs> just enjoy it. Cause it's a really, you know, in everything, I guess, try and enjoy everything as much as you can. It's easier said than done. Um, but specifically to acting and being creative and enjoy it because it is so, it is so tough. And if mm. you don't enjoy it, then what's the point? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, have, have fun and enjoy, and enjoy it. it. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> if yeah. you could break the ice, meaning have a drink with anyone past or present, who would it be and why? This is such a hard question because <laughs> there's so many people and I love to drink. So <laughs> I need like a party of people to drink with. Um, but I think the, probably the, the most would be Robin Williams. Mm. I love him. I grew up idolizing him and I just think he was such an amazing talent and I would just love to have met with him and hear about his, you know, his experience and, his anecdote mm -hmm. yeah yeah as a, as a comedian and an actor he was just so brilliant yeah he was amazing yeah yeah, yeah. 
Well, thank you so much. This was absolutely lovely. Um, I can't wait to watch Buffering. When, when, would you, do you know when, when it's out? Is yes, there a... so it airs on the 5th of August at 10 p.m. <gasps> right after Love Island. Um, and, uh, and then it will also be available on ITV Hub. Thank you. I'll see you soon, hopefully. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Elena. <laughs> Here, do I hang up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao. <laughs> hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more inspirational videos just like this, then don't forget to subscribe, which you can do by clicking right over here. Also, leave us a comment in the section below and tell us who you guys would like us to break the ice with next.